New World. Enjoy yourself. Bottom level, orange beam, enjoy yourself. Bottom level, orange beam, enjoy yourself. What's happening here? This is a group of semi-moron epsilons that are going on a nature nausea reinforcement field trip to... I can see that. I meant what's taking you so long. Oh, right away, sir. There you are, all set. Bottom level, orange beam, enjoy yourself. Now, sir. Central Hatchery's plan. Priority. I'm sorry, sir. There's a circuit delay. Oh, next. The Cathedral of our Ford, please. Uh, just a moment, if you don't mind. I don't think you understood. I said priority. I happen to be the assistant director of the Central Hatcheries plant. Yes, sir. All circuit check. Really, these gammas, they're hardly brighter than a delta. Or even epsilons. Oh, no. I'm sure any delta is much brighter than epsilons like those. That's one of the wonderful things about being a gamma. We're, we're not, not too stupid, stupid and we're not too bright. bright. To be a gamma is to be just right. All right, sir. Central hatcheries, red beam, first level. All right, sir. The cathedral of our Ford, please. The cathedral of our Ford. First level, blue beam. Oh, the Cathedral of Ford. Then I suppose you're part of the Archford Synth Religion staff. No, I'm just trying to catch hold of someone who's supposed to be there. Actually, I'm with the Sensu Feely Corps. Oh, a Tele Feely writer. Not yet. I'm still working on my first Dr. Jingle short. It's on the perfection of conditioning. Oh, yes, yes. Very interesting, aren't you? Well, I go this way. Uh, Miss Lysenko, uh, may I see you for a moment, please? Hello, Tomikin. I might have a little surprise for a little Linda. Oh, what? Tell me. It has something to do with taking you on a very special computer holiday trip. I don't know. Ringo Roebuck wants me to go with him to the Saxorama Festival. And Anwar Bowie wants to take me for a week to a new Sensor World Park. And Ronald Jagger has round trip something tickets special? to. Savage Reservation. Oh, that's different. Everyone will be so envious. But are you sure about it? Oh, it's just a formality. Just a question of my application being correctly. Miss Lysenko, why is this section closed down? Oh, something that was supposed to go click, click started going clack, clack. But naturally, I wouldn't know what. I'm just a beta. Of course, of course. Linda, I have to go now, Tomikin. Of course. Artificial sunset has been reset for 6.04 due to technical delays. Artificial sunset has been reset for 6.04 due to technical delays. Sir, your assistant fortune, sir? Yes. Oh. Helmholtz Watson, about teletesting your docu short. I know you're very busy, sir, but I do need approval from your office. I have to address some alpha graduates in synthoculture and then a meeting with the committee on consumption norms and standards. Yes, right after that, I think. Mm. 
small for more means more for all. If it can be made, it can be used. And if it can be used, it can be made. History is bunk. Half the time equals double the yield. War is bad for business. As select alphas, conditioned to believe without knowing and to know without believing, you have been chosen to view the surrogate revelations and synthetic mysteries upon which all perfect and placebic belief is founded. Here before you are sacred teletime plex relics of the sanctified life, thought, and holy works of our four, from whose divine inspiration came the ultimate perfection of the endless assembly line, which has given us the ultimate endless, perfect happiness of more things, for more wants in perfect balance, with more wants for more things. And it is from our inspired creator of the Model T that we derive our blessed sign of the T. For we be brave. brave. Let us now repeat the catechism. Community. Community. Identity. 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 Stability. Stability. Ford bless you. I am Mustafa Mond, assistant controller to her Ford chip, Nick Sona Bick, Western World controller. And I have been assigned to show you certain selected histobunk highlights from the past. But everything is perfect now, and everything will always be perfect. So what does it matter what things were like when it wasn't perfect? Excellent point, but quite misguided. Exposing future stability monitors, such as yourself, to the imperfection of the past is of course part of the perfection of the present. A centuries ago, in primitive times, before the dawn of civilization, there were things that would be inconceivable to us today. Such things as poverty. Although there was actually land and food in abundance, some starved, because unlike our perfect society, they were unable or unwilling to balance population to consumption. Sometimes too much of one, or too little of the other. The result? Disease. And rather than eradicate the sources of disease, as we have done, the superstitious primitives continue to rely upon a quite useless class of technicians called doctors. Violence, which the ancients actually appear to have enjoyed and reveled in. While we have been perfectly conditioned to want only what we have, and to have only what we want, and are therefore always happy, the uncivilized ancients were prey to destructive emotions, such as ambition, hate, and love, which of course always led to violence, which in turn naturally led only to more violence. And senility, while we remain at the prime metabolic age of 35 to ensure a maximum level of useful consumption until painless death from chemo stimulation between the ages of 80 and 90, the people of the past lacked the knowledge of how to stay young, even though they apparently valued youth so highly that they actually indulged in superstitious self-mutilation. As seminarians who will one day take your places in Syntho-Culture Stability Centers, you must face these histobunk facts, unpleasant and even revolting as they sometimes are. Eating the actual flesh of animals and even filthy things from the ground. And sometimes refusing to engage with more than one individual of the opposite sex. And even collecting into groups called families, a pervasively immoral concept of pre-civilized times Yes, thoroughly disgusting examples of complete sexual perversion, as you can see. Did the primitive females actually... Yes. Primitive females gave viviparous birth to young. Oh. Like animals? Yes, physiologically, exactly like animals. I understand your reactions. Perhaps we should take a brief soma break. Naturally, none of what you have seen would be shown to betas or gammas, much less
to deltas like these. But each of you is an alpha. You weren't mass-produced in computer-cloned Bakunovsky batches. And you are all supremely happy, supremely content. But then, that is truly the perfection of our civilization. Everyone is adjusted. Everyone has been conditioned to want to do the work he has to do. And thus, everyone is perfectly happy, perfectly content. Alphas like you, betas, gammas, deltas like these, or even epsilons. Are you happy? Happiness for all is happiness for each. Are you glad to be deltas? Deltas all have lots of fun. Deltas get to play and run. Very good. But do you wish you had been incubated as alphas? No, no. Excellent. That's all. Would you flash into the assistant assistant director, please? Oh, I think she's occupied, sir. Oh, never mind. I'll do it. Miss Trotsky, there seems to be a production slowdown. There'll have to be a time and motion inspection. Miss Trotsky? There you are. I couldn't find you. Oh, that's right. I forgot. I was going to engage you in leisure hour today. Oh, that's all right. I may do. Anyway, it was about something else. There was a data transmission for you from the controller's office. Oh, about my trip, no doubt. To the Savage Reservation, you know. Yes. I think they're canceling it on you. Canceled? They couldn't. They wouldn't. Not when I've made plans to... Where is it? In the file. There must be some mistake. I had everything planned. How would something like that look on my computer file? You'd better take a Soma. Yes, that's just the thing. Here you are, sir. <sighs> I guess you won't be going on your vacation now. Oh, we'll see about that. It so happens I know something quite important in the controller's office. Quite important, in fact. Must have a mind. First assistant to her fortship, Nixona Bick. Yes, we'll just see about that. You are viewing Helmholtz Watson's film, Planned Perfection. Each newly produced infant is given six full years of nightly hypnopedic sleep-teach lectures to reinforce class acceptance conditioning. Later, in central conditioning centers like this, each child receives daily happiness reinforcement drills as well as prescribed courses in erotic play, death acceptance training, full consumption practice, and nature nausea games. Then, upon reaching computer lessons after six more years in a final conditioning school, each happy, healthy individual will go forth to take up his or her predestined place in the greater society, dedicated to ensuring the continuing perfection of community, identity, stability. Excellent, and very nicely packaged. You liked the whole film, I mean. Oh, immensely. You caught the whole spirit of unchanging perfection, and with admirable simplicity. I'm glad I had a chance to see it before it's computer-erased and electro-shredded. Computer-erased? Electro-shredded? Unfortunately, it does contain some dangerously heretical ideas. I made every effort to keep ideas out of it. Take the scene on anti-nature conditioning charming scene of little children revolted by fresh flowers. The implication is that nature nausea conditioning is necessary to keep people from enjoying the countryside and thus under consuming. But that's true. <laughs> Quite beside the point. I just wanted to show why nature nausea training is one of our most recent improvements in... You see? Recent implies past. Improvement implies progress. And if the present is perfect, then there can't be any progress, of course. And even the word why, why, that's the most dangerous of all. It raises the whole question of purpose. No, I'm afraid it would never do to let an ordinary audience watch anything quite as dangerous as your docu-short. 
But the test audience watched it. They all liked it. You can see right there. Quite meaningless, since they've been conditioned to like anything that's shown them. But... All my work. Exactly the point. Thousands and thousands of feet of film consumed. Hours and hours of work expended by technicians. And once it's been erased and shredded, it can be done all over again. Remember your sleep talk. Don't delay. Consume today. Use it up and throw it away. <laughs> make a special effort to keep ideas out the next time. Commendable. You know, I'm reaching the age of 50 now, but I still remember my own youth. And I'm sure I had just as many deviant ideas as you do. I even composed a scandalous readout myself once. I think it was something about the possible benefits of allowing mutational differentiation in randomly selected embryos. An interesting idea, but <laughs> dangerous in the wrong hands, of course. How old are you exactly, Helmholtz? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Just think. By the time you reach my age, you'll have been able to have accomplished this dozens and dozens of times. Good work. Just keep it up. Are you sure a system controller mod knows I'm waiting? Sir, your case is being circuit checked through computer files. Why? I'm supposed to get all the reports on you. Reports? Oh, from my superior. Who? Alice B. Stein, the director of Central Hatcheries. I wouldn't know. Oh, you can go in now, sir. Yes, there it is. Controller confirmation of restriction for Thomas Graham Bell. Subject to overview discretion by the Director of Stability Norms. But there must be a mistake. Is that all it says? Oh, look for yourself. But I'm sure there's a mistake. You can check my computer record. I have exceeded consumption and pleasure norms on each of my free vacations. And so I'm eligible now for a free free vacation. Um... This director of stability norms, who's that? I am. Oh, uh, well, I'm sure you know about this uh, mistake. But I'm afraid it isn't, Thomas. You see, actually, I'm the one who requested the official overview. Well, why? I went through all the proper channels. Why? The Savage Reservation can be dangerous. Oh, not in the physical sense, but in other ways. You see, these primitives are not at all like, say, the Quakerites who were driven into the Yukon. No, these primitives are quite different. They have actually regressed into an ancient form of tribal society. Their ways are so directly opposite to ours that it can cause a very disturbing effect. As a matter of fact, several previous visitors had to be sent to emotional re-engineering institutes. Naturally, we couldn't chance that happening to someone in your position. Naturally. But uh, you visited the Savage Reservation? Everyone knows that. It certainly hasn't affected you in any way. Perhaps not. But then my predestination conditioning is to accept the unacceptable, while yours is to attain the attainable. It's quite different. But uh, how can I attain the attainable without something unique like this on my computer file? Yes. A valid point. I'll take it into consideration. Uh, when? I mean, I'm planning on leaving tomorrow morning. So uh, if there's any way I could get an immediate clearance, of course, you could go over my head to the controller's office. Oh, but I wouldn't do that. You wouldn't. Well, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> I see. But if you had to, you would. Mawina, put that permission order through for him. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one thing. You shouldn't go to the Savage Reservation alone. Take a female along. Preferably one with definite anti-deviant morality training. I've already taken care of that. I've engaged several extra females over the past few weeks precisely to pick out the proper one. Linda Lysenko, one of the fertilization technicians at the plant. A well-conditioned beta minus and uh, very pneumatic. Did you pick it up? 
get all those Marina? Yes, everything's programmed into his computer file. What's his readout? Plus five assertiveness quotient. That's quite acceptable with his conditioning level. I think he can continue to be considered for an upper management post, don't you? Yes. But I can't help finding him just a little... Pompous. Yes. Self-serving. Yes. You see, solid managerial potential. But he's so dull. With Alpha's conditioned for upper-level executive duties like Thomas, being dull is an absolute necessity. It vastly increases their ability to think rigidly and inflexibly. Here I am, assistant director. What? About the production quota inspection request from your office. Oh, yes, of course, of course. Here, we've been able to speed up the studying of Epsilon semi-morons. An extra half-batch a week. Ah, oh, well, I hope they'll still be able to perform the uh, necessary work. Of course, speeding up the production of gammas and deltas without performance loss is more difficult. But even sub-deltas can still perform routine jobs, sorting, filing, collecting audience or meter results, that sort of thing. Of course, there's nothing to be done about alpha and beta production. One egg, one bag. Unfortunately, it still takes nine months. Even... Even increased surrogate endocrine transfusion... Yes, 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 yes. Uh, pardon me, but I really must take care of something. It's uh, an administrative detail. Tomikin, it's you. Look what you made me do. Everything's set for the trip to the Savage Reservation. Plus, of course, you're not interested now. Oh, I am, Tomikin, I am. When? We're catching the early rocket tomorrow morning. Oh, the early rocket? Yeah, what's, what's wrong? Well, it's just that I'm engaging one of the Beta Plus decanters tonight. Adolf Rockefeller. You know, the cute one with the curly eyebrows. And we were going to spend the night at his apartment. But we can spend the night at my place. It's much closer to the rocket port. Unless you'd rather engage me tonight. I'm sure I could rearrange my plan. Oh, no, 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 no. I've already engaged you twice last week. And you know how people gossip. Suppose they start whispering that I have immorally limited my engagements to just one female. I've got my reputation to think of. I've never engaged him before. But all the girls in decanting say he's very good. And he's so cute with his curly eyebrows. Have you seen the new feeling? Where this alpha erotic counselor becomes a delta pleasure technician by mistake when she... Well, I'm not exactly sure what happens, but everyone says the applied religious orgy scene is just wonderful. That's where Adolf's taking me. Who are you engaging tonight? I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not engaging anyone. It's just like Thomas says, people gossip. Everyone's starting to whisper about you. They say you've only engaged one man in the last three weeks. It's true. I don't know what's wrong with me. Well, you have to do something about it. I have, really. I went to a dispenser, but you know what they're like. Take two soma and go to bed. Synthetic therapy sessions with an idealist, VPS treatments, even a pregnancy substitute. But nothing seems to help. I just don't know what's wrong with me. Uncomputocepted female. Uncomputocepted female. You forgot to set your computerception dial on your Malthusian belt. I'm always doing that. Sometimes I wish I'd been incubated as a neutered free Martin. Just think. They can engage all they like without having to fuss about computerception. Here, let me help. You don't want to get, you know, pregnant. Did you do the drill yesterday? I think so. Oh, I must have, because I engaged one of the assistant fertilization engineers on the compulsive leisure hour. You know, the tall one. Then just set the dial to the next one. Remember, day plus one equals none. Day plus one equals none.
I'm Stelina Shell, Chief Warden for the reservation. I understand you got in yesterday and rested over. Proper acclimatization, that's the thing. I suppose you stayed at the Lux Hotel at the Rocket Fort? Yes, and it was just as nice as could be. We're quite proud of it. Liquid air, vibro vacuum massage, sense of feely vision in every room. But of course you won't find any of that on the reservation, I'm afraid. Oh, you mean this isn't part of the reservation? Oh, no. This is the official Anthra study station. The reservation itself is some distance. It's quite remote and completely sealed off by an electronic barrier. But you'll be taken directly to our substation by Escaporter. From there, I'm afraid you'll have to go on foot. Of course, you'll have a guide. They're Delta Minuses, but all specially incubated for high eye, ear, nose acuity. Though, unfortunately, at the expense of some other faculties. Well, first we better see if you're properly outfitted. Ion heater, sense of thermal bag, extra soma and feta pep rations, condensed info food, ultrasonic microbomb pop popper. You know how to fire this, of course. Safety off. Aim. Press firmly on the clip. It's entirely non-lethal. It merely causes temporary paralysis. Um, the savages. Um, I mean, if they're dangerous, I certainly wouldn't want to expose Miss Lysenko. Oh no, no. It's simply a precaution. Actually, the savages are quite tame. Well then, if you're ready, I'll show you to the escaporter. This way. It's so seldom anyone visits the savage reservation. I rarely have the opportunity to show off our treasures. What is that? Just some examples of our fauna. But they have all been conditioned to remain within the hunting preserve set aside for the savages. No, I meant this. Oh, just one of their cult superstitions meant to frighten off demons. In fact, their religion seems to be based partly on demonology. What sort of demons? Almost anything at all. Rocks, trees, animals, sometimes strangers. Like you. We must have come almost a mile by now. Yes. Um, one moment. How far is the Savage Reservation? No, 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 not where is it, how far? There! from the ground. They're not even wrapped in plastic. Don't they know any better? Of course they don't. They're not civilized. some sort of aberrational pattern. I hear there once was a thing called madness in primitive times. Yes, that must be what it is. Um, maybe we better get away from them. It might be catching. Fascinating. I really should do a psychograph readout on the degenerative effect of non-decantation. Yes, I think this was just the thing that would look really good on my computer file. Well, 
Move aside. I, I want to go through. No. It is forbidden to approach the crucified god. Make it done. I just want to snap some computer pics. No. Where's the director? Who's in charge around here? I am. He's so old. Linda. far from the village, possibly, just possibly, there's a whole model tea. Where? They call it the demon's place. Of course, if you'd rather stay behind while I go, I... No! Any place would be better than here. Better take an amphetamine. What is it? Mescal. A little is good, much is not good. Oh, how awful! <sighs> well, what are you waiting for? Come on, move along. Yes, Tom McKinnon. Ready? Just a second. J plus one equals none. No, then two. No? One. Coming, Tomakin. Yes! Oh, is that all you want? Oh, just try to be a little quieter. No. The evil one that becomes the spirit of wild animals, Satan. Nonsense. Whatever it is you're muttering about, just leave us alone. Oh! Hey! Get away! No, the evil one, Satan! Well, we'll just see about that. Linda? At 
after that, he seems to have wandered alone for several days before being found by a search heli rocket sent out by Chief Warden Stelina Shell. Uh, apparently, he initially suffered from deconditional hallucinations, something about demons and uh, sacred relics, according to the Chief Warden. Yes, spiritual psychosis. Always a danger upon contact with viviparous primitives. I presume he was given the required soma decompression therapy. Yes, and he was completely cured. And subsequent tests showed that he conformed to the proper socio-psy norms. Then he can still be computogrammed to rise at least one more level before any disabling incompetency factor has to be seriously considered. The female companion, Linda Lysenko. No trace of her was found. No trace. But of course there was no practical reason for searching. Her body would have begun to decompose and would have been much too contaminated for phosphorus chemo covering. Get away from me. I'm not one of you. I don't belong here. I may as well have died. Not that I mind dying. I had very high marks in death appreciation when I was a child. Get away! They're the ones. It's all their fault. Which one? Both of them. That is impossible. Which? Must the truth be torn from your tongue? Both of them. Both of them. Horrible savages. Get them away from me. I want Tomekin back. Then it was the one from the other place. Tomekin. Tomekin. Since it was the other, you may stay. Stay? Stay here? What are you talking about? Get me some Soma. Anything. Can't you see that there's something wrong with me? Probably caught one of your horrible, primitive diseases. It makes me feel like this every morning. And look. That is because of the child. Child? Baby. Baby? Because you are pregnant. Pregnant? <gasps> pregnant? Yes. A male child. I don't care. But you must choose a name for him. Now, while the evening star bears the fullness of moon. I don't care. But without a name, the goddess of light cannot touch breath to his lips. One. John, 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 I don't care. Get out. Leave me alone. services. I've got tickets to the new Ophelia run. Oh, that's wonderful. I'll be ready right after work. Mm -hmm. Wrong. 
Wrong. Wrong. Alcohol added to Alpha Plus bottle. Wrong. No, 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 no. It is a secret wine. Nectar potion. It is only meant to anoint you with. But I don't have any soma. Sentho pituitary extract levels. Satisfactory. Hyperoxygenation level, satisfactory. Final DNA genetic scansion level. An alpha plus bag of annoyed marks. Of course, it should have been caught earlier on the production line. The chief quality engineer seems to think some of the alcohol for substunting epsilon embryos got into this alpha bag by mistake, but of course, that's quite impossible with the zero flow procedures I've instituted. Probably some clerical mix up before the raw material for the unit reached my division. But I can assure you, that I intend to institute increased computer control. Yes, I'm sure. Are there any other production defects? Oh, no, 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 no. Just one random mistake of some sort. A random error. Interesting. The name again? Marx. Bernard Marx. Alpha Plus, male. Shall I order the unit aborted? No. No, proceed with the assembly. Plus, Mark Bernard G. Inspected and approved. Case number eight, Raquel Gandhi, Beta Minus, Eradication and Rectification Technician. Consistent failure to share an orgy porgy devotional services recommendation, re education center of subject's choice. Approved. Case number nine, Bernard Marks, Alpha Plus, age six, Central Nurseries Plant. Bernard Marx. So he's six years old now. Continued socially erratic behavior patterns. Failure to conform to prescribed intellectual achievement norms. He hasn't been able to keep up intellectually with other alpha children. Just the opposite. It appears he overabsorbed his rote studies in less than the time frame allotment. A distinct pattern of deviant overintelligence. I see. And the recommendation in Bernard's case? Removal to a reconditional nursery for infants and older children. Denied. But I want to be kept informed of Bernard's progress. Because gray is the nicest... How lucky to be a Delta and get to wear... Too blue. stupid and not too bright. So glad to be a Beta. Betas don't... How lucky to be an Alpha. Everyone is happy. Attention, Central Nurseries Depot. Alpha Ward 1, Electrostall 9... Marks, they Bernard G. Rectified. Things like betas or gammas or deltas or epsilons. How lucky to be an alpha. 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 Sleep refreshes. Sleep revives. Sleep refreshes. Sleep revives. Sleep is nice. Sleep is good. Sleep is what everyone should. And never have to do awful things like betas or gammas or deltas. Mother? No, 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 I told you. Don't ever call me that awful name. I told you and told you, John. Linda, Linda, can't you learn to say that? Yes, Linda. What are chemicals? How would I know? It's your book, Linda. Well, that doesn't mean I know what chemicals are. Where do chemicals come from? Well, from the chemical supply depot, of course. If someone wants chemicals, the chemical workers bring chemicals. Just like anything else. 
Like anything? <laughs> yes, anything. Not like this awful place. If you want Synco food, the workers bring Synco food. If you want plastic clothes, the plastic clothes workers bring plastic clothes. Whatever you want. I wish I could go there, Linda. Oh, I wish I could, too. Everything's so perfect there. Everything's there you could want. And anything you want, you can have. Anything. And if you're ever blue, blue. Wonderful pills that never make you feel bad afterwards, like the mezcal here. And the people aren't evil and immoral. In the other place, everyone engages with everyone the way they should. And you can engage all the time with anyone you want. Like Pele? Oh, no. I'd never bother engaging with someone like Pele in the other place. Can't we go there, please? You don't understand. It's too late. Too late. <laughs> Hey! Hey! Hey, see what I got? Hey, see what I got in Mezcal? Oh, let me have some, Pele, please. Sure, I'll be a little while first. Run out and play, John. I don't want to. Come on, John. Little wolves have little fangs. I just don't know what to do with you, Bernard. Maybe the chief computer structure does. Marks again. Still refusing to participate in religious sex devotional exercises, is he? No. This time he disrupted the erotic training class by refusing to play Hunt the Zipper. Well, well, Bernard. Don't you like to play Hunt the Zipper? No. Well, well, I see, I see. Sit down, Bernard. No, no, there, in the vibro water chair. Comfy. Now, Bernard, do you want to play Hunt the Zipper? No. Are you sure? You really do want to play Hunt the Zipper, don't you? No. Well, well. Let me ask you again, Bernard. Do you want to be allowed to go back to your erotic training class and play Hunt the Zipper with all the other boys and girls? Yes. Fine. Now run along back and play. Quick, quick. Well, well. He does seem to be a bit of a problem, doesn't he, Miss Arco? I think we'd better schedule him for a few clinical sessions with one of the school's psychosex therapists. Whatever you say, of course. But personally, I think there's something wrong with him. He's so little for his age, hardly bigger than a gamma. You know... They say some alcohol got into his son of blood surrogate while he was still in the bag. Yes, yes. I've heard that, too. Still, you must admit he is brilliant. Oh, and things like computer reading and play math, yes. But he completely failed desensitivity training 1A. Personally, I think he should be put into a remedial conditioning class. Yes, yes. Or even a moral reformation institute. However, the fact is, Miss Arco, that for whatever reason... Mustafa Mond himself seems to take a special interest in little Bernard. And if the first assistant Western world controller is interested in him, well then, of course, we are too. Aren't we, Miss Arco? Yes, we certainly are. <laughs> How all occasions do inform against me and spur my dull revenge. What is a man if his chief good and market of his time be but to sleep and feed a beast no more? Yes, 
Yes, I know. She is my mother. But who is your father? Say that one, too. Tomikin. Tomikin. <laughs> now leave! <laughs> Always just trying to be good and do the right thing. Engaging one is bad. Having two is good. Having three is best. Four, five, six is a perfect mix. Seven, eight, nine, whenever there's time. Everyone who's civilized knows that. And now all I can have is Pele because he's drunk and won't work. And no one else wants to. No, not him. I know it's immoral to engage only Pele, but what can I do when... Almost pernicious woman. Oh, lecherous creature that dust and venom lashes she's with the vile. Oh, say something nice for Linda from the old book Mitsima gave you. Hmm? About the pretty lady sleeping. Tell me that one again. Please. Oh, please. But now sleep. Sleep and see what visions I have seen. Towers cloud-capped. And men that like angels fly. Thither shall we go, you and I. Sub-perfection and gorge are filled with divinity. All right, sir. Central Hatchery, red beam, first level. Follow the proper beam to the proper escaportation. Bernard! Bernard Mark! Oh, Helmholtz! Central Hatch, release, please. All right, sir. Miss Trotsky? Miss Meyer? Miss Rothschild? Didn't I order a computer projection feasibility chart on increased production of Delta Pluses? Yes, Director. But it's not there. No, Director. Then where exactly is it? It was supposed to be done by Bernard Marx. He's the new assistant computologist. Oh, yes, I know the one. A very spotty moral record, to say the least. Brilliant, I suppose, but... If only his Fordship must have Mon didn't take such a peculiar interest in him. But if he's fallen down an assignment... Thank you. Yes, yes Director. Director. Hello, Bernard. Oh, Henry, am I interrupting something terribly important? No, Lenina. I'm just doing a current inventory on Epsilon production. I just wanted to make sure it is tonight I'm engaging you. Yes. I'm going to pick you up after work. You didn't forget, did you? Oh, no. I just wanted to make sure. I'll be ready. Bye, Bernard. Lenina. Yes, Bernard? Bye. Bye. Mr. Marks! I believe you were told to computer project the production feasibility rates of increased delta production. Yes, Director. Then where, may I ask, is the report? Here, sir. Here. And not on my desk computer screen. Well, then it's late. Yes, Director. Unfortunately, I had to revise some of the definitional input from your office, but I think you'll find it all here now. End-use allocation percentages, sub-intensive maximization of assembly personnel units, and a recommendation to rectify some of the declining production numbers. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Well, we shall see. We shall just... Bernard! Hello again. I tried to catch you this morning so we could ask a port here together. Here? I thought you were working on a new feeling. I was, but then the producer came up with a notion for a docu-jingle. On the uh, Central Hatcheries plant. That's interesting, sort of. You must be very happy. Yes, of course. Especially since they selected me over several other jingle writers. Hi. Are you engaging anyone tonight? I'm free. Well, actually, I'm tied up with work. Oh, too bad. Maybe next time. Women, they can be such a distraction, don't you think? Really? 
about engaging me tonight, Lenina? Oh, I can't, Benito. I'm engaging Henry Exxon. But ask me again. How can she let herself be part by the... Be careful. If someone heard you talking like that, even as a joke. You've complained sometimes. I've heard you. Yes, but not over something trivial like that. Bernard, I have to go to a jingle board conference. Uh, stop by and see me sometime. It's not trivial. Hi again. Hi. I saw you with Lenina today. I thought maybe she was engaging you tonight. Oh, Bernard and I have never engaged each other. Maybe Bernard doesn't think I'm pneumatic enough. I think you're very pneumatic. Don't forget about the vacation trip, Lenina. You going on vacation with him? Maybe. I suppose you've decided which girl you're going to take on yours. No? Well, I just can't make up my mind either. Benito asked me, and Henry Exxon, and Nikita Firestone. I just don't know. I want to go somewhere different this time. Somewhere special. Well, I guess I better be going. Henry will be waiting for me. I expected young Marx would soon want to do something quite out of the ordinary. I see no reason not to grant his request. But you don't agree. Well, I know Bernard Marx is a special project of yours. But no one's been allowed to visit the Savage Reservation since Thomas Graham Bell. All the more reason. We can see how he reacts to Bernard's going. Of course, it is young Marx I'm interested in. As you say, a special project. If a random variant like Bernard proves to be socially adaptable, it might mean that certain mutations in the assembly process would be useful. Of course, he could be psychoemotively disordered by his exposure to the freedom of the reservation. Yes, and then he would be quite useless for further testing. Perhaps, if a normative factor is controlled in, a female, has he requested permission to take one along? I believe so. Yes, a beta technician in Central Hatcheries plant, Lenina Disney. Bernard Marx, you're actually going off on your vacation trip with little Bernard Marx. Yes. But why? <laughs> no one ever goes anywhere with him. I know, but this is something different, special. Bernard has permission to go to the Savage Reservation. Almost no one except the director himself has ever been there. Besides, I like Bernard. Of course, I've never engaged him, but there's something about him that's so cuddly. Bernard, it's all set. I've arranged my computer leave so I can go to the Savage Reservation with you. That's wonderful. <laughs> of course, we should engage at least once before we go. Otherwise, people will start talking. Maybe even tomorrow night. If I shift around... Could we possibly go somewhere private to discuss this? Whatever for? Besides, I don't have time right now. Come on, Lenina. We're going to be late for the Sensu Fili. Just a second. Yes. Tomorrow night, I'm sure I can fit you in. Going off on vacation with Lenina, huh? Don't worry. You'll enjoy engaging her. I always do. I don't care, and I don't want to hear about it. You seem upset about something. Maybe you've been working too hard, remember? Work to play and play to work. A little Soma. That'll fix you up. Remember, Soma a day... I don't a... need any Soma, and I don't want any Soma. How about Infinipet? No. Maybe a violence passion surrogate treatment. Sometimes that does wonders. Maybe you're right. <laughs> Just step into the psycho porter, sir. Let's make sure you're all comfy and secure in there. We have electrode contact. Yes, all in order. Now, what would your preference be? An inquisition torture chamber? A pirate raid? 
Perhaps you'd like to try one of our new gangster rub-out treatments. Something of a novelty, but we've had excellent results with them so far. What's your strongest treatment? The Gladiator Circus, number four. But I wouldn't recommend that for you, sir. It can be quite demanding, physically. Besides, only betas and alphas are allowed to... I am an alpha. Can't you see what I'm wearing? Yes. I just thought there'd been some slight confusion. I don't think so. Number four, thank you. Yes, sir. Whatever you wish. Did you stop the treatment, sir? Were you displeased? Would you like to try a different one? No, thank you. I'm just, uh... There's some things that I have to think about and consider. Think. Consider. How awful it must be to be an Alpha. And how lucky we are to be Gamma. After all... To be good is Gamma, because Gamma is good. The girl that I was telling you about, Lenina, it's just that I think about her all the time. And what's worse is that now that I'm taking her on vacation with me, I feel even more wanting about her. Oh, where are you going to? One of the new Luxo camps? No. <clears throat> Savage Reservation. Really? Really? How did you manage that? Maybe something like that is what I need. You know how distracting everything can be. Too many awards, too many girls, too much of everything. Oh, yes. Sometimes I wish I were young again and just starting out like you. Helmholtz, you're successful, you're talented. Yes, it's true. Everyone says I've written some of the finest contemporary jingles. Still... Lately, I've had this strange, troubling feeling that there must be something more I can write about. Something different. Really? Like what? Well... Like the sense of emotions in the sense of feelings in VPS cubicles. Suppose, just suppose, that people could really feel those things. Love, hate, passion. Now, now, look here, Helmholtz. Suppose somebody should hear you talking like that. The both of us could be sent to reconditioning centers. Or even to one of those free islands like Iceland or Madagascar. And you know what that means. No Soma, no Amphetopep. No, thank you. You're right, of course. We shouldn't let ourselves talk like this. I shouldn't even let myself think about such things. I wish my problems were simple like yours. Simple? Of course. If you want this, Lenina, just tell her. What could be any simpler? Alarm, sir. It's just the Solidarity Patrol. Are you all right, sir? Can we help you in some way? I'm perfectly all right. But you're alone, aren't you? There must be something wrong if you're alone. No, 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 no. I'm not alone. I'm coming to see someone there in that compartment. Female Beta. Oh, that's different. Go right on, sir. Bernard! 
isn't that a coincidence? Just a minute ago, I was talking about you while Henry Exxon was engaging me. Don't just stand out there. Come in. I'm not here. But isn't it awfully late for us to engage each other anywhere else? That isn't what I mean. I want you to come with me. Now? In now. There's no one here. It's empty. I know it. That's why I come here. By yourself? But Bernard, that's... It's unnatural. I know it. Sometimes I just don't understand you at all, Bernard. Sometimes I don't understand myself either. I don't like it here, Bernard. It's... it's so silent and... and empty. Bernard, there isn't even any music. Why ever did you bring me here? Why don't we go somewhere so... so we won't be so alone? I want to be alone. With you. So that we can talk. Talk? But Bernard, whatever would we talk about? Especially alone. No one really wants to be alone. I do. I want to be alone. And I don't really know why, except... Sometimes it makes me feel... more special. Different. Like I feel about you now. I don't want anyone else. I want you. Just you. But we should not have left my place. I guess we could go to yours. You don't understand. I want you. Just you. Or no one. But Bernard, everyone has everyone, so no one has no one. Yes, I know. Everyone has everything. So no one wants anything. That's right. You feel better now, don't you, Bernard? A little. What are you doing here, Marks? You sent for me, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, in a minute, then. Oh, Miss Rothschild. Would you come to my office for a moment, please? Oh, Gina. Marks. Why did I send for him? He's going off on his vacation. You have to sign his computer leave. Oh, yes. Well, then why isn't his file punched up? It is. Hmm. Even worse than I suspected. His work record is definitely aberrational. He has actually been doing twice his scheduled quota of work and barely half his scheduled quota of time. Well, that sort of thing could lead to a complete breakdown of the systems analysis automation. When does he leave on his vacation? Tomorrow. Hmm. Well, perhaps while he's gone, I can do something about him. Well, I suppose I have to see him. Send him in. Send to Mr. Marks, please. Tonight, Ochina? I can't tonight. I'm engaging Helmut Swanson. Oh, yes, the uh, Telefili jingle writer. Mm -hmm. Well, check for me with Miss Trotsky and Miss Meyer. Perhaps one of them is free. been completely satisfactory. I only hope, sincerely hope, that uh, your time away on vacation will allow you to seriously reflect. Uh, do you follow me? Yes, sir. Good. Well, just where is it you're planning to go? To the Savage Reservation. The Savage? <laughs> That's impossible. 
Even in the past, only the most rigorously selected individuals were allowed to go there. As a matter of fact, I once went there myself. Yes, sir, I know that. I can personally assure you it would be much too dangerous for someone like you. Only stamina and skill allowed me to survive it, and uh, the female I took along, uh, I don't recall her name, but she was exceptionally pneumatic. In any case, she didn't survive it. So you can see it would be quite impossible for you to be allowed to go there. Quite impossible. But I've already been given permission to go. Well, obviously a mistake of some sort. Not really. Uh, if you'll notice, uh, it is official. It, it is signed by his fortune. Well, yes, I see. Uh, if, if you would just sign it too, sir. There. And I hope you enjoy yourself. Thank you, Director. Why, Tina's busy too, but... No, 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 no. no. Insipid, pushy little... Something like that in his computer file. He probably thinks he'll be advanced to an administrative position. Well, we'll just see about that. You mean him? Yes, Marx. I think he has some ridiculous idea that he could actually be computed up to my position someday. Well, we'll just see about that. And then Thomas called the whole staff together. Everyone. Even the gamma clerks. And he announced that he was going to be officially removed of all duties because of gross moral and professional dereliction. You're married, Max? Yes. Mm. I just love your helium bed. It's so... Pneumatic. <laughs> Go on. No, I mean about Bernard. Oh. Well, then, Thomas said, he was going to be officially transferred to one of the substations on a free island. Iceland, I think. As soon as he got back from up. But what are you doing? Just checking the time. But it's still early. And I don't have to be in the office until... Where are you going? I have to make a telecall. Now? Bernard, are you done with your telecall? Bernard! Iceland. What? Iceland. Ah, Bernard, you don't want to go there. They say it's awful. Transferred. It's not fair. Just because I got permission to come here? Well, he's afraid of how it will look on my file, on my computer file. That's it. What do I do? Just take a few extra grams of Soma. It'll be all right. Was and will make me ill. I take a gram and only am. No. He probably thinks I'll run right back. Then, of course, it won't be on my computer file. Well, well, here you are. I'm the Chief Warden, Stalina Shell. I suppose you stayed over at the Rocketport Lux Hotel? Climatization, that's the thing. I see they haven't outfitted you yet. Well, we'll take care of that, and then I'll show you about. No, uh, thank you. I want to go straight there. To the Savage Reservation? But you should be outfitted first. Ultrasonic microbomb pop popper, extra rations of Soma and Amphetipep. Thank you. I don't need anything. If we could just go straight to the reservation, please. Well, then of course I won't be able to give you a guided tour of our station, but... Whatever you wish. This way.
a feeling, wasn't it? I may have a soma. But I used all of mine. You should have taken the ones that the warden offered you. My lord, if there were only somebody here other than these savages. There. No, that's a savage. Oh, but he's different than the others. He's so beautiful. Tomorrow, strangers, I pray to be of any service to you. Oh, well, thank you. You come from the other place, do you not? Who are you? You see before you a man of besmirched honor and heart, pierced shame. Look, there. spot. A gram is better than a dam. Oh, that I could have suffered the slings and arrows to rent my tutu sullied flesh like the others. But you are not like the others. Your skin is so smooth and, and your hair is so fair. Yes, because of my skin. It should be my blood. Like the multitude in the seas incarnadine, there for all to see. What are you talking about? There, there. I should have been the one chosen. I could have withstood the whips. I could have appeased the very vaults of heaven and stood in proudest raiment before the crucified son of Mechatan. But no, they denied that to me. Oh, I am fortune's fool. What a shame. If only I had some Soma to share with you, you'd feel better right away. A soma a day keeps the gym jams away. Sometimes Linda used to say that. Oh? Is she like me? No, not like you. Do you like me? Maybe you'd feel better if we went and... Who's Linda? What? Who is Linda? Oh, my mother. She came here long ago from the other place, but she was lost and separated from Tomekin. My father. Tomekin, your f my father. Was he from the other place also? When, when did he come here? Wh what did he look like? Well, I'm afraid I couldn't tell you, but, but, but Linda could. Do you wish to speak to her? Yes, yes, right away. Linda! Oh, Linda! 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 What is it? Someone to see you. No. Right out. There's Silva. Are you from the real world? For to be praised. Something nice like that again. If you only knew what it's been like over me here. No soma. No feelies. No gammas and deltas and epsilons to do the dreadful work. Oh, and really, worst of all, if you can imagine. They won't even let you engage with someone any time you want. Can you even imagine? Th that is, he, he said his... Th the one that you came here with, Tomekin, was that the name? No, I just called him that. He was very important. Assistant director 
of the central hatchery. But I've forgotten his his real name. Thomas Grimbell? Yes. But I I suppose he's forgotten all about me by now. Don't be so sure. How would you and your How would you both like to come back there with me? You mean to the other place? You'll take us there? Don't you want to go? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Linda's told me how perfect it is. I've dreamed of it. Now to actually go there. Be able to leave this place. It'll be like Miranda and find a new wondrous world. <laughs> oh, what wonders! How many goodly creature there be? How beauteous mankind is! How lovely and fair and... Are you married to her? Am I what? Married. Thus joined, let two souls be as one. You understand? Forever. Hear the words they speak mean that, forever. Oh, it's no. Brave new world. There's such people in it. Crematorium and phosphorus recovery plant number 17. First level. The computer records verify her name is Linda Lysenko, a beta minus fertilization technician. And apparently there's no doubt that the young savage called John was. Well, that is to say, she is actually. His mother? Yes, and it was definitely computer facted and verified that while in the Savage Reservation, she actually gave a viviparous birth. And it's quite clearly the... F the father. Male impregnator could not have been a primitive. Offices of the Arch Broil, Corporation Relations Division, First Level, Blue Bean. Electro Obstacle Valve. Is that all? It's a dreadfully scandalous thing to come to light like this. Of course, but interesting nonetheless. Especially the young savage. By vigorous birth and an unconditioned environment. The perfect experimental subject. After Marx removed them from the savage reservation, he took them to the local Lugs Hotel. He's made a number of telecalls seeking permission to bring the savage and the woman back here. Of course, it was denied. Of course, since such permission could come only from your fortune yourself, naturally. Naturally. Have the next call from Mr. Marks transferred here. Directly to your fortune's office. Directly to me. And only to me. Um, what's wrong with her? She's fine. She's just so much tripping. Now, before I go, let me acquaint you with a few of our modern conveniences. Fanon! Don't be afraid. It's just a vibrovacuum massager. Watch. You see? Maybe you'd like to try our electrohelium couch. Maybe later. Oh, well, all right. If you're not interested in this, uh, maybe you're feeling hungry. Here we have our mini micro snack bar. You just pick whichever item you'd like, push one of the artificial flavor buttons. How about an Insta burger and some imitation chips? Go ahead, anything you like. I'm afraid I'm not very hungry. It's all right. You see?
Perhaps there's something worthwhile on the telly feeling. The following telly feeling program schedule is now available. Channel 1, The Guiding Neon. Channel 2, The Fordian Tabernacle Sing-Along Hour. Channel 3, General Dispensary. Channel 4, High Holy Orgy Day Services. Channel 5. I'm afraid there's nothing much on right now except the uh, detergent cereals and the uh, synthro-religious programs. Maybe you preferred The View. Something different. Uh, a seascape. Whatever you feel like. Oh, what wonders. Is all of this in the other place too, Bernard? More than this, John. Lots more. John, you can have anything you want. Then why weren't you happy there, Bernard? I don't know. Uh... Sometimes I, I, I felt like I didn't exactly belong, like I didn't quite fit in with everybody else, but you wouldn't understand about that, John. Oh, but I do, Bernard, I do understand. That's the way I always felt in Malpay, because I wasn't like everyone else. Well, it's going to be different now for both of us. Just wait till we get back and they find out about you, you'll see. But when do we go, Bernard? Soon? Now? Well, first I have to get permission. That's where I'm going now to make a telecall. While I'm gone, I want you to stay right here. I, I don't want you to go anywhere. Do you understand, John? Oh, yes, but not. You, you'll be all right. You're, you're not afraid. Afraid? No. I mean, to be here all alone? Alone? Did the girl go away? Vanina? No, no. She's upstairs summon happening. John, don't worry. Heavenly perfection rests upon her hands, her eyes, her hair, her cheeks. Oh, but to steal an immortal blessing from the lips of my Juliet. the actual background of the savage, so to speak, I realize that this could be of considerable scientific importance, naturally. Yes, yes, Mr. Marks, I understand the situation. Permission will be granted for you to bring the savage and the woman back here. And I will expect you to give me a full report on the savage's activities and reactions. Yes, Your Fortune. You can count on me to do everything necessary to see that full advantage is taken of the savage. For science, of course. Yes, of course. Thank you, Mr. Marx. Brave New World. Brave New World. I 
have called the members of the upper staff of the plant here for a necessary but unfortunate reason. As director of the Central Hatcheries plant, I have a special responsibility to see that its reputation remains absolutely spotless. Unfortunately, a blemish has appeared. A blemish that if allowed to remain could tarnish the reputation of the entire plant. I speak, of course, of Mr. Bernard Marx. I have, if I may say so, been overly indulgent with Mr. Marx. His work record has been deficient in all respects. Still, that could possibly be overlooked. But Mr. Marx's morals, or should I say, lack of morals, cannot be ignored. He has been officially observed alone on numerous occasions. He has twice refused to attend high holy synthosex sex services, and that is by no means the complete extent of his immorality. Mr. Bernard Marx has engaged with only three females in the last year. Therefore, I have decided to request his immediate transfer to the free island of Iceland. And I'm sure, after what you've heard here of Mr. Marx's record, each of you of my decision. Mark's there? Yes, but there's also... Doesn't matter, whatever it is can wait. Send him in. Well, Mr. Marks, I suppose you know why you've been summoned here today. Yes. I've decided to make an example of you so that it will be clear that deviance and immorality will not be tolerated. That is why, as you see, I have called the staff together, so that they may derive the proper moral lesson from witnessing your disgrace and your dismissal. Good. Good? Yes, good. I'm glad they're all here. Mr. Marks, you seem to be taking this very lightly. But perhaps once you've been transferred to the island of Iceland, you'll begin to realize... Just one moment. Do you realize that you're interrupting me? Yes, I realize that. But there's something of particular interest that I would like to bring to your attention. I'm not interested in anything you have to show me, Marx. I think you'll be interested in this, Director. Where is he? Where's my Tom again? Oh, that's him. Of course it is. Did you really think I wouldn't recognize him, my very own Tom again? Stop it. What, what are you doing? Get, get away from me. Don't you remember me, Tom again? Don't you remember your little Linda again? Get this awful creature away from me. I have no idea who she is. I, I've never seen her before in my life. Oh, yes, you have. You took her to the Savage Reservation with you. It's me. You're Linda again. You, you, you can't be. I, you're dead. I, the female I took with me, she died. It's a lie. Marx, he's the one. He's behind this. I didn't die, Tomikin. The savages found me and took me to their village. And I couldn't leave because... because of... Our John. John? John, what, what are you talking about? years of dedicated work. Not a single moral blemish on my computer file. I 
never allowed myself to engage the same female three times in one month. I faithfully attended orgy services each and every week. It just isn't fair. Yes, I see your point. But unfortunately, your past good record cannot undo the scandal. Well, it's his fault. He planned it all. Surely not all of it. Bernard wasn't even in his embryo bag when you went to the Savage Reservation with Linda Lysenko. It wasn't my fault. Perhaps not, but it did happen. I know. I know. Everyone's snickering at me and pointing at me. I just can't face anyone again. I just don't know what to do. Well, it's just a thought, but maybe if you went away somewhere, somewhere far away. Yes, some place where they won't know about me. I see. You want a transfer? Yes. Yes, a transfer to some place where they won't know about this awful scandal, where I won't be the object of ridicule. I've heard there is an opening with the hatchery substation on Iceland. Iceland, uh, yes. That sounds remote enough. Would you see that his transfer to Iceland is put through immediately? This way. Uh, that awful Linda creature, she isn't out there, is she? No, she didn't come. Just your... Your son. Oh, no. 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 Perhaps you better take him the other way. shame. Yes, I could tell how deeply you were affected by his predicament, Mr. Marks. Well, I mean, it is sad. A man who's given so much to so many out like that. Oh, then you've modified your opinions of our society, I take it. You know, your fortune. I don't know who's been telling you things like that about me. That's of no consequence now. You seem to have been making quite a splash with your savage. Oh, it's amazing. People are clamoring. I've received telecalls from some of the most respected people. Everyone wants to know what he's really like. Yes, I'm sure. But for the moment, I'm much more concerned with what he thinks of us. I'm going to leave you in charge of him. But of course, I will require complete reports on everything he does. You understand? Yes, of course, your fortune. So this is the savage. Well, come in. I'm summoned forth. But you'll get to come and see me, won't you? Is that allowed? Oh, yes, that's allowed here. In fact, required. But come along now. You'll have time for that later. Fare thee well at once. Bernard. What's going to happen to him? As a matter of fact, I've just been given full responsibility over him. By his fortune, personally. I've been instructed to show him everything and to report back directly. Oh. Well, that won't leave much time for engaging, will it? I'm afraid I'm going to be rather busy. I meant John. Perhaps I can work something out for you. Well, and what shall we call you? My name is John. But your last name, I mean. Why not Savage? Mr. John Savage, how does that strike you for a name? It boots not. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. A rose. Oh, yes, of course. You do not have roses here, do you? Oh, I'm sure we do. In one of our nature nausea classes or museums. But don't people wish to see flowers growing? Uh, they did once. But we found that flowers are counterproductive. 
The time that could have been spent producing or consuming was wasted idly looking at flowers. I'm afraid I do not understand. Well, of course you don't. Uh, yet. But you will. That is, if you stay with us. You're not going to send me back. No. No. Well, only if you wish. You see, Mr. Savage, here in our world, you may do anything you wish, be anything you wish, have anything you wish. Yes, and have anyone you wish. Linda? Linda? No, no, Mr. Savage, you mustn't disturb her. She's having her joy hour. How do I know she's all right? You can see for yourself. Just look at her. If she is happy, then beasts that reason not and lack all discourse are happy. Linda? Linda? Go away. But it's John, your son. Go away. Selma! 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 Now see what you've done? You've completely thrown her off her Selma schedule. Oh, I'm very sorry. That is all, Nanny Nurse. I'm Phillips Park Ludens, the chief dispenser. What is it, Mr. Savage? Linda, I want to have her with me. Quite out of the question. But she belongs with me. She's my mother. I will not tolerate that sort of dirty language in my dispensary, Mr. Savage. And if you plan to say any more filthy things like that, I'll simply have to ask you to leave immediately. This way, please. I'm, I'm sorry. F forgive me. But I do want to have her with me. I don't think you understand, Mr. Savage. Here we have her on a strict summer schedule. Two happiness hours and one full joy hour a day. Without proper dispensary supervision, she would immediately soma coma. And if she didn't get any soma? Then she would, of course, scream incessantly. Is that what you want? Oh, no, 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 no. But this soma, aren't you actually shortening her life by giving her so much? In one sense, yes. But in another, we're actually lengthening it. A megasoma coma is a bit of what the ancients used to call eternity. Eternity? Eternity was in our lips and eyes. You mean that? Not exactly. In any case, Mr. Savage, you can be sure we'll do everything possible for her here. Although, of course, nothing can save her. You don't mean she's dying now? No, no, not now. But, of course, sooner or later, the megasomidosis will lead to paralysis of the respiratory sector. Her breathing will then cease, and she will die of terminal bliss. Well, I want to be with her. How soon will this happen? It's difficult to say, especially in her case. The first sign is usually a brief reality relapse. Of course, you wouldn't want to see her then. But I would. Very well, Mr. Savage. I'll see that you're contacted. Two, his Ford ship, Mustafa Mond, Western World Controller, from Bernard Marx. Subject, John Savage. I first took the Savage to the great cathedral of our Ford. He was obviously inspired by the deep synthetic reverence of the worshippers. And I believe I was able to explain to him the rudiments of surrogate spirituality and placebic belief. John's tour of a senior kindergarten conditioning school was, under my close guidance, a complete success. Naturally, I couldn't explain all the educational intricacies such as advanced play math to him. But I believe that with my further help, he may well be able to grasp some of the simpler things such as nature, nausea, reinforcement conditioning. Come why? While the savage was obviously charmed by the primary erotic play class, it did seem to raise a question in his mind. He asked again, where without, without mothers, where the children came from? Now, Mr. Savage, I think you'll find this very interesting. After the embryos are bagged, they come along here for initial model selection. At the moment, we're turning out redesigned deltas. Oh, Juliet, move not. 
and on thy sweet lips would my soul be purged. Mr. Savage, come along. I want to show you our all-new and fully improved Bakanovsky embryomatic separator. One epsilon unit goes in, and out comes 60 reproductions, absolutely identical to the original in every production detail. Come along. Did you sprinkle on additives or mix them in? I'm sorry, please, no more questions. We must keep on schedule. Are you engaging anyone tonight? Uh, perhaps. I'll give you a telecall. Thank you. John, hurry, we'll be late for the Ford State Synthesis Service. What are they doing? Uh, these are the Delta workers receiving the daily ration of Soma. At Linda? Yes, not as much, but the same thing. Why? Why? You said they were happy. Well, of course, they're happy. Everyone's happy. Then why do they take the Soma? Because it's prescribed. The three after work and six on the Ford State. Why, Bernard? John, really, you must stop using that word. Call this over here, Mr. Savage. Uh, that's enough. We have to go on with our tour for Mr. Savage. No more pictures. But we need a statement from him for the Daily Telly Times. Say one of your funny things, Mr. Savage. Go for a muse of fire that would ascend the brightest heaven of invention. A kingdom for a stage, princes to act, and nobles to behold the swelling scene. It's wonderful. That's just perfect. Should I go on? Say something more, anything at all. That's all. I'm sorry, we must go on with our tour. Now, you can all interview Mr. Savage later on. Right this way, Mr. Savage. I hope that none of that upset him. I mean, I do hope that you won't put anything uh, unfavorable about our operation here in your report. Well, we'll see. We'll see. You can count on me to leave out any minor matters, as long as we understand each other. Oh, we do. We do, Mr. Marks, I assure you. Uh, careful, Mr. Savage, not too close. What is this? Uh, those are heliofusion tubes. You see, we take helium energy from the sun. The sun, up there, hot, hot. Then we pipe it thousands and thousands of feet down there, underground, where it's turned into nuclear fusion energy. Bubble, bubble, fizz, fizz. Then back up comes fusion energy through those tubes. It's really quite simple. Approach thou beacon to this underglow. And thou, oh shaking thunder, strike flat the thick rotundity of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, uh, I suppose you could put it that way. You will put that in your report, won't you? I mean that I explained everything to him. What's wrong with them? Oh, that's a batch of our especially substanted Epsilon workers. As you can see, Mr. Savage, they were designed specifically for heliofusion work. Heat immersion pigment, or growth inhibiting hormones. You will note that their bodies were designed to fit perfectly into the coils of the tubes. Bernard, may we go? Oh, but we haven't seen the Delta Radiotrax workers yet. We haven't seen... I must go. I feel a sickness of spirit. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, perhaps we'd better go. Uh, um, but you won't put any of this in your report, will you? We have to leave. You're behind schedule. Take your elevator down for another batch. You did extremely well the other day at Electro Obstacle Golf. I mean, for never having played the game before. But it's not a game, Bernard. Everyone just sits at that machine and presses buttons, but no one runs or jumps or throws like in a game. Well, it used to be like that once, I think, with a round object that people used to hit this way and that with sticks. Naturally, not that many people could play at the same time. But as soon as uh, they replaced these sticks and ran things with machines, then, of course, more people could spend more time consuming more energy. If no one plays, though, Bernard... Why do you call it a game? Because, because, because that's what it's called. Central Slumberatorium 2, priority. Very good, sir. First level, pink beam. What 
is this, Bernard? This is the slumberatorium garden of the departed ones, and there's no need to whisper. Beautiful, aren't they? Are they truly dead? Oh, yes. Naturally, the departed ones aren't shipped here for formal cosmetic reconstitution until they've passed on. But I can assure you, this is exactly the way each one looked in their real life. What killed them? Oh, nothing at all. By taking the correct chemicals, we all stay young till perhaps 80, 90. That's when the uh, metabolic strain causes PPO. That's peaceful passing on. Where is it? Right from creative cremation. It's all right. You pushed the dispose button. Where did he go? Down to the chemo recovery furnace. The bodies are brought here for cosmetic reconstitution before cremation and final chemo recovery. That way, the chemicals that are salvaged from the Come body on. are returned to usefulness. Let's go. And the individual goes on being part Come of the on. greater society forever. Good. Do you want to play the plop plop game? Yeah! <laughs> well, have you all finished your yum yum soma candy? Yeah! Since you've all been very, very good on our whole death training picnic, I guess it's time for your reward. Each one gets one plop plop. Yeah! But just one. Go on. children all together death is perfect death is fun death is good for everyone good very good let's do it again and show mr savage here how we sing our we're not afraid of dying song when there's no one left sing a song of death four and twenty courses baking dinner stew Making pretty chemicals just for me and you. Death no. is perfect. No, you don't understand. Death is dark as night. In that country from whose born no traveler returns. And none need court death. For death will come to each. So let us sit upon the ground. Tell sad stories of the death of kings. Let us talk of graves. Really, Mr. Savage. Of what? You have completely ruined my death training class. Now I'll have to start all over again with them. <gasps> Come on, children. We'll go back to the dying in hospital and have a fun picnic. Come along. Come on. If you ask me, I think you'd better start educating your savage, Mr. Marks. Come on. I'm sorry, Bernard. I seem to have done something wrong. John, this incident is strictly between you and me. And the savage then completely disrupted an advanced syntho philosophy course by asking strange questions of the students. What sort of questions exactly? Well, here, for instance, he asked them to explain to him why life was a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Some sort of primitive gibberish, obviously. Ah, yes. Macbeth. Yes, obviously, gibberish. How about females? How many has he engaged with? So far? None. I know it's incredible. But at least according to this report from Bernard Marx, that does seem to be the case. And despite several illustrated lectures on morality, he still seems to be attached to his... His mother? Yes, his mother. Decidedly unnatural. For us, of course. But not for John Savage. Not yet. Well, suppose he contaminates others with this sort of base animalistic attitude. Unnatural is unnatural. Perhaps. But then that is precisely what the experiment is all about. To determine whether or not the savage can adjust to our higher plane of morality. Of course, if that proves to be impossible, the experiment will have to be terminated. Should I advise Bernard Marx of that? No, I don't think so. After all, Mr. Marx is part of that experiment now, too. I really think I've done wonders with this boy. 
course, you have no idea how difficult a sort of responsibility can be. Tours, interviews, lectures, and of course, our fortune wants me to report personally about the savage. Well, I suppose I should be quite impressed with you these days, Bernard. Well, enough about me. Tell me about yourself, Helmholtz. What have you been doing? Just a small piece of my own I've been working on. Maybe you'd like me to show it to Oh, I would love for you to show it to me. The only problem is I don't have the time. I'm sorry. You do understand, don't you? Yes, I think I do. You've changed, Bernard. I'm not surprised that you noticed. Everyone has. As a matter of fact, just yesterday, Sigmunda Luce, that's the head of the Human Element Reconditioning Bureau, told me that everyone's been saying that I'm really a new, improved Bernard Marx. What happened to the young man I used to be able to share in a concerns with and questions on the nature of free will? What happened to the young man who so often wondered what it would be like to live free of conditioning? What happened to that, Bernard Marx? Oh, it was all computerless nonsense. I've outgrown all that. I really must hurry now if I'm going to make my engagement with Miss Sigmunda. Uh, It's just a word to the wise from a friend. The sort of things that you were talking about for inner concerns, free will. I really think you should be more careful. I will. Tonight? Huh? You're going to engage with the savage tonight? <gasps> How thrilling. Bernard arranged. Oh, I really do envy you, Lenina. I mean, everybody's talking about you being interviewed by the Feely Tone News, being asked to lecture at the Young Woman's 40 in Association, and being engaged by the president of the External and Internal Secretions Corporation. Oh, oh my God, it's so wonderful. Except, what? Well, one part of it bothers me a little. The trouble is, I feel like I'm getting all this attention under false pretenses. The first thing everyone wants to know is what's it like to engage the savage. The trouble is, I just can't tell them. Because I don't know. You don't know? <gasps> you mean, you mean you've never engaged with the savage? Why not? I've given him every opportunity. There must just be something about me that he doesn't like. Although I can't imagine what it could be. Well, I don't know either. I mean, you're very nomadic. <sighs> well, maybe tonight will be different. We're going to see the new Feely, and then we're going to take a sense of pleasure tour. He's bound to be in the right mood after that. <laughs> Everyone says it's just wonderful. It's about this blasto food worker, that's Roger. And he eats something that accidentally deconditions him. And when he sees June, he only wants her, but because he's sick, he doesn't want anybody else to have her either. So he comes all alone at night and it... Oh, there is my June, just like the moon, up there in the sky like a big plastic pie. Who's there? Roger? Roger? Where are you, Roger? Here I am. Oh, come fly away with me and be my little valentine. We'll engage all day and engage all night and soar forever to the highest height. Ooh. What is it? What's wrong? Oh, you have to put your hand on the feeling it or else you won't get all the effects. Oh, Junie June, I swear by yonder moony moon. No, no. Oh, I hear someone coming. You must go. Quick. Saying goodbye is so much fun that I will keep it up till night is done. No. No, it's wrong. Never you and Julian isn't like and that. And I am a beta. Now, now, please, please, what's in a name there? Would you sit yes. down, please?
Benina, you shouldn't go to see things like that. The feeling, you mean? It was based in Ignoble. It was unworthy of someone like you. Well, I didn't know it was going to be like that. That it would be something that would upset you, I mean. You didn't know? Well, then, that explains everything. It does? Oh, then I'm glad. Don't you like me? Don't you like the way I look? Why don't you just come in and... No, I, I mustn't. Good night. Fine, I'm sure. Fine? Fine? This is going to be perfect. You don't know who I've got coming here. Look at this. Director of the Institute of Illustrated Mechanics. Headmistress of Harvard. Head of the Joint Chiefs of Computability. President of the Council of Decantation Control. This is just the beginning. You name them, I've got them. Oh, and Helmholtz, if, if you would like to come yourself, that's fine. You're more than welcome to. Excuse me for one moment. You realize that my guests are from the top echelon of society. I want the best. High tone stuff, you mean? Like after the feely is over? That's fine. What about how I love that dear old bottle of mine? Can you play that? Yes, it's programmed for that one, too. That's what I'm talking about. We, we want things that are sedate. Good old Mr. Mark. Strictly high class stuff. That's all such a responsibility, but. I suppose it is worth it. After this party, I'm sure I'll be invited everywhere. Is that what you want, Bernard? Of course, don't you? I suppose. Or at least I know I used to. Well, I'll put a word in with the right people for you, Helmholtz. You know, since I've been in charge of John, I've met some very influential people. Where is John? Oh, John, he should be out here by now. I better go check on him. Uh, you're absolutely sure you won't stay for the party, Helmholtz? I don't think I'd fit in with your guests. I'm sure you know best. What are you doing? No, no, that won't do at all. What? what? What are you wearing? I told you I want you to change back into what you had on when you came from the reservation. Bernard, I need to talk to you about some things. John, my guests are arriving. I need to talk to you about Lenina. No, no, she would not do at all. Now listen, they're expecting to see the savage. Naturally, they want you to look like a savage. Change. <laughs> Mr. Marx, where is the savage? He's getting ready. There's Elton Lear, that marvelous telecartoonist. If you'll pardon me for one minute. Anita Shapley, director of the Bureau of Standards and Practices of Socio-Sex Norms. Bernard Marx? Yes, I thought so. From your record, of course. My record? Oh, yes. We keep all sex deviance records on file. Now, I think it would be best if I saw the savage alone. Naturally, I prefer to conduct my socio-sex examinations in privacy. So if you could just show me to him, oh, then I, I couldn't. I couldn't. I'm, I'm, I'm... Couldn't. 
Perhaps you're forgetting about the file on your deviant perversions, Mr. Marks. I'm, I'm, I'm... Mr. J. Edgar Milhouse, professor of shredology of the Advanced College of Histobunk Rectification Studies. Professor Milhouse, I, I'm so... Who are you? To... I'm your host. I'm Bernard Marx. Uh, well, well, where is he? Where is the savage? Well, I didn't come here to chit-chat. I want to see him now. Yes, of course, Professor, of course. I'm just on my way to get him at this moment. Her Reverence Archdeaconess Rona DeMille, Director of Orgy Porgy Services and Disco Worship. Your Reverence, I shall return in one moment. You have to come out, John. That's all there is to it. I promised every one of them that they could meet you, and every one of them is here. You should have asked me first whether I wanted to meet them. Look, you don't even have to say anything. Oh, maybe one or two of your little speeches the way that you do. Please come out, John. Please. I will not be as flies to wanton boys. They kill us for their sport. That's exactly the sort of thing that I'm talking about. That's exactly what I mean. If you could just come out and say something wonderful to them like that, they would adore you. No. John, how can you act like that? After all that I've done for you, bringing you back here and everything else? John, this party is very important for me, and it should be important to you also. Everybody's here. Everyone who matters, they're all waiting to see you. John, you're acting like an absolute epsilon. I promise you, he is on his way. He'll be right here. He is coming. Excuse me. You haven't tasted the artificial soybean pie. It's delicious. No, I haven't, and I do not intend to. I have never been so humiliated in my life. Imagine rearranging my entire schedule to come here and examine the savage, and all for nothing. Oh, no, not all for nothing. He's a marvelous boy. I have made a note of this, Marks. And as far as I'm concerned, you should have been sent away somewhere. And after this... Maybe you will be. Professor, what... think that I was actually going to invite him to a high holy disco mass. <laughs> you can be certain that after this, he'll never be invited anywhere. Would you all just please wait one... Don't think you're going to get away with this, you little nothing. I'm going to see that everyone finds out about this little fiasco you've stayed. If you would all wait and be patient for one moment. Obviously, Thomas was right about you. Now everyone will know what you really like. The needle, don't go. We can talk about all times. We've always been friends. Not now, Bernard. I mean... If I stay here with you, then they start laughing at me, too. Oh, I'm, I don't care. Get out of here, all of you. All right, get out. Just get out. Get out of here. Stop playing and get out. Get out of here. What are you, deaf? Bernard. Did you send them away? No, they left. When they couldn't see you, they just left. It's a scandal. Everyone's going to be talking about it. Everyone's going to be laughing at me. Once in Mount Pei on the reservation, more than anything, I wanted to be chosen to be one of the hunters. They didn't want me. They laughed at me. Well, what did you do? I hunted alone. Well, it's not like that here, John. The most important thing is community, identity, stability. It's wrong to do something alone. Besides, what would I do? Anything you wish to do. Um, I know you want to help, and I appreciate it, but you couldn't possibly understand what I'm going through. After all, you're nothing but an uncivilized savage. Bernard. Everything will be all right again. I don't think so. I think it will be exactly the way it was before. The way you were when I first met you. But that would be very good. What are you talking about? Oh, Bernard, there's nothing wrong with being unhappy. Perhaps I do not understand. Perhaps you should speak to a friend you can trust. You have a friend, don't you? Of course I do. I have dozens of them. Dozens. Helmholtz. He's got time for me day, night. Come on. Whoever it is, go away. I don't want to see anyone. Helmholtz, it's me. Please, there are people trying to engage instead of wandering about shouting in the middle of the night. 
Oh, Bernard. John. Well, come here, come here. Really? Some people just have no sense of decency at all. It was horrible. To have everyone leave me there? To be left? Alone? All alone. You can't imagine what that felt like. But I can. That's exactly what happened. I found out I could imagine it. I was chosen to give the guest lecture at the School for Advanced Emotional Engineering. I don't know what suddenly possessed me, but instead of using the prescribed rhymes as examples, I started reciting a work of my own. A new jingle. Well, what's the harm in that? No, it's different than that. Wait. Here. I'll read some of it for you. I flee from all committees. Stick but a broken drum. Midnight in the city. Flutes in a vacuum. Shut eye, sleepy faces, every stopped machine. Oh, stop it! I know. I know, it's full of ideas, dissident ideas. There's even a part later on about the pleasures of solitude. Well, don't read it. Ideas like that. But my fort, suppose they got inside someone's head. Yes, that's what the president of the Solidarity Council said when I had to appear before them. And of course they're right. I know they're right. It's just that I can't... Well, you should have destroyed these. You should have computer shredded them. They're not jingles. I, I have no idea what they are. Poetry. 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 What kind of thing is this? Explain it to me. Well, it's... It's not like anything else. It's beautiful. Like this. What a piece of work is a man. How noble in reason, how infinite in faculties. In form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. That's worse than what Helmholtz read. The beauty of the world. The paragon of animals. And yet to me, what is this quintessence of dust? Just stop it! I can stop it! Bernard. Bernard is right. The words are uncivilized, vulgar. And yet the sound of them, the rhythm, Obviously, whoever wrote them was a first-rate propaganda technician. Some primitive jingle writer, I suppose. But the emotions, the ideas, grief, hate. <laughs> Computer lessons vowing to angels and God. <laughs> no, it's all too uncivilized and vulgar. <sighs> if only there was some kind of believable madness and violence and passion that one could write about. But what? What could it be? <clears throat> First of all, I hope that your fortune understands that I've made every attempt to reform the savage's thinking. As a matter of fact, the constant contact with the savage has allowed me to rededicate myself to the ultimate principles of community, identity, stability, so that I can fulfill it. Yes, I'm sure it has, Mr. Marx. I'm sure. But at the moment, I'm much more interested in the social and emotional development of the savage than I am in you. Oh, yes, of course. I'm getting to that. I merely wanted to make sure that your fortune understood that any maladjustment shown on the part of the savage is not my fault. Then whose fault is it, Mr. Marx? Well, as a matter of fact, He's been spending a great deal of time with Al Holtz, Watson. They seem to be spending hours together talking of all sorts of aberrational things like grief, passion, love. Not that I let myself be in the least contaminated by what they're saying. But of course you listened to it. Well, yes, of course I have to. It's part of my duty, isn't it? On the other hand, if you feel that I, I shouldn't... No, not at all. How else would you be able to report to me? <sighs> yes, that's what I... Thought, and of course, it's the only reason I did listen. 
You say that the savage talks a great deal about passion, and in fact, love. Perhaps his maladjustment has to do with his relations with women. It can't be. He doesn't have any relations with women, I mean. Not that I haven't tried my very best to explain that he should engage with as many women as possible. But apparently he's just too primitive to understand about morality. As a matter of fact, he actually seems to think it's wrong to want more than one female. Then there is one particular female he has shown a more than ordinary interest in. Yes, I've made due note of it. I can give you the name. Not that I've observed them myself, but I did hear the savage mention the name to Helmholtz. It's Lenina. Lenina Disney. Perhaps I could speak to her if you like, uh, warn her of, of the consequences. No. Since she is apparently part of the experiment now, too. <laughs> Wrong. 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 Cease all computer sex order operations. Wrong button. Wrong button. What happened, Lenina? I don't Wrong. know. I was supposed to be fertilizing Cease a batch of gamma females, and I think I turned them all into epsilon males. <laughs> there you see, it's all right now. And besides, they can always use an extra batch of epsilons. But that's the third mistake I made today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Well, I do. You haven't engaged with a single man in over a week. And you refused to go to the orgy session last night at the YWFA. I suppose everybody's talking about how bad and immoral I am, but I can't help myself. All I want is him, John. But he doesn't want me. Oh, nonsense. I mean, every man wants you. Why wouldn't he? Yes. Why shouldn't he? Oh, well, Helen Holtz. I'm very glad you could come. I need to talk to you. I'm here for you, John. I just don't understand you. Sometimes I think you want me, and sometimes I think you don't. Don't you like me even a little? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, more than that. More than words can wield the matter. Oh, I knew you really wanted to be with me. You do, don't you? I mean, I want to be with you always, forever, for all eternity. No, don't say things like that. First you say such nice things to me, and then you talk to me as if I were some awful bad woman. Oh, no. You, so perfect, so perfect and so peerless, created of every creature's best. But if I'm so perfect, then why haven't you asked for me? Because I'm not worthy of you. In my village at Malpay, I would have brought you the skin of a mountain lion. But here I do not know what it is I should do to prove myself to you. Lenina, set me a task, anything. I'll make mountains level and the continent melt itself into the sea. Oh, mistress that I serve. Who makes my labor's pleasure. If only this. Let me fetch and carry for you. But why? There are machines to do everything. Or at least epsilon semi-morons. Besides, you needn't do anything at all. Just take me. Oh, please, take me. Oh, please, make me quick. I'll set my dial so you can drive me wild. Oh, hug me. Hug me till you drug me. Give me a kiss that's full of bliss. Oh, shame, where is thy blush? Stop it, whore! Get me to a nunnery, go! Assume a virtue if you have it not! Out of my sight, damn it, whore! A gram is better than a dam! When your nerves go jingle jangle, a soma will make you spick and spangle. Fit you not the soiled horse, go to it with a more riotous appetite! Oh, frailty. Thy name is woman.
was this goodly book made to write horror upon it? Yes? John Savage? Yes, this is John Savage. Linda Lysenko. How serious? Approaching terminal bliss. Before you're dying in asthma, I'll be there right away. I did love you. Once. And love is madness. John? Telecoms, all right. Yes, sir. Danny what? Nurse, what is this commotion about? He insists on going into the intensive euphoria unit. Are you the head Danny Nurse? Yes. My name is John Savage. There's someone here. Linda Lysenko. I have to see her. I'm sorry, but uh, no visitors are allowed in the IEU ward without permission from the chief dispenser. I, I received a call. She was dying. Of course. We naturally assumed that you would be glad to hear the news. I'm not glad to hear it. Well, we can't have that. After all, death is happy. Death is good. I'll see that you get an amphetopet pill. No, I don't want a pill. I just want to see my mother. Mr. Savage, we don't allow that sort of dirty talk in here. That is all, Nanny Nurse? Yes, Chief Dispenser. Now then, Mr. Savage, I assume that you're here about Linda Lysenko. Well, I can only tell you that she's doing extremely well. Her megasoma infusions have had to be slightly increased. But she really seems quite cheery and happy, as of course is normal. Altogether, we're quite pleased with her condition. You mean she's going to be all right? She is all right, Mr. Savage. But, but the telecall. They said she was dying. Yes. Any moment now, I should imagine. Tests indicate it will really be quite quick and simple. No need at all for a synthoeuthanasia treatment. May I see her first? I can't imagine why. But she's through there, in the final euphoria lounge. Don't disturb the others who are dying. The others? Of course. Death is social, and death is shared. There. Yes, exquisite, isn't it? Of course, I can't do the sort of finished artistic work they do in post-termination with molded plastic applications, silicone injections, and pigment infusions. Still, I actually prefer the little, what shall I call it, lifelike quality that's always lacking in post-termination. This. Isn't Linda Lysenko? No. I was going to start next on her. And believe me, you absolutely will not know her when I'm through. No. But the results are so much better if I can start while they're still in a pre-terminal state. No! Well, if you don't care how she looks. Linda. Linda. Were you playing outside? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have to study now. So, when we go back to the other place, you'll know everything. Mm -hmm. Say your alphabet now with me. A, B, C. Vitamin D, the... I forgot, what is it? I've forgotten. A, B, C, C. Vitamin D, the fats in the water, uh, the gods uh, in the sea. That's it, that's it. 
一眼就一见到。Forts in this place, and there's goodies in the sky. Then, John, is that you? Yes. Don't go away again. I won't. Tell me. Tell me again about. About. What was it? About the pretty lady dreaming. Mm. Tell me that now, please. See what visions I have seen. What towers cloud capped, and men that like angels fly. To this shall we go, you and I, and sup perfection. My children, everyone will get his turn, and the one who does the best will get an extra soma cream treat. Yay! You don't mind if my class plays a little, do you? Oh no, not at all. That's part of the fun of my job. Good. Everybody ready? Yeah. Get set. Go. What's wrong with it? Leave her alone. You understand? Leave her alone. Get them out of here. You understand? Get them out of here. Certainly not, Mr. Savage. You should know by now that this is a prescribed death training class. How dare you interfere with the children's death conditioning? Get them out of here! Come along, children. Come along. We'll go play somewhere else. Come along. We'll have a nice game of hunt the zipper, and then we'll go to the crematorium, and we'll have lots more fun. Really? No. It's John, mother. John, your son. John. Hold me. I feel so... Help me. Please help me. Yes. But there's nothing at all wrong. She's just dead. Attention in the intensive euphoria lounge. A new happy one has just passed on. They'll be right in to get her. Are you sure she wouldn't benefit from a little touch-up before...
transform yourselves into lines for soma distribution? Thank you. Please form yourselves into lines for soma distribution. Thank you. Please form yourselves into lines. How many goodly creatures there are here. How beauteous mankind is. How brave new world. In line, everybody. That's it, everyone. Listen In line. This soma is bad. It's poison. It hurts you. Please, Please don't, don't do that, take Mr. Any. Savage. Soma makes you into slaves. It robs you of, of everything magical and special within you. Mr. Savage, please don't do that. You can never be free until you're free of Soma. Everyone be calm. There is an ample supply of Soma. Enough, everyone. I'm not going to let you take any more. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Don't you want to feel alive? Don't you want to feel free? Don't you want to feel the blood coursing in your veins? Mr. Savage, don't do that. No, they don't. Emergency. Helium fusion plant number three. Send solidarity forces immediately. Occupant John Savage, present location, activity respond. Mr. Savage. That's what I'm finding out now. Soma Distribution Center Heliothrax Energy Plant. Activity inciting riot. Amazing. Oh my Ford, they're going to think that this is my fault. Where are you going? To help John. He's totally out of control. Uh, let's get out of here. No. Let's help him. There, sir. Stop them. It's all right now. We'll take care of everything. Ready to spray them with soma vapor. Cover them with anesthetic hypo beam. Bring up the central music speaker. Ready to synth cast. Voice of reason tape? No. I think the voice of good feeling. Anti-riot speech number two. Medium strength. Yes, sir. My friends, my friends. Please, please. What is the meaning of this? My dearest friends, why aren't you all being happy and good together? Happy and good. At peace. At peace. Be calm. Be calm. Please. Please. I do want you to be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Be happy. Now goodbye, my dearest, dearest friends. May the good Ford keep you and watch over you. Now destroy so destroy so may the good Ford. Apparently, the and soma vapor did not completely restore them to emotional stability. Destroy soma. Destroy soma. Destroy soma. Farewell. We don't need your soma. We're free. Right? He's the one who caused it. The savage. Well, nevertheless, I'm afraid we'll have to take them all in. Will the three of you come along quietly, or must we anesthetize? We'll come. Thank you. 
Oh, me? Well, why me? I'm, I'm not involved. In this is a mistake. I'm sorry, Mr. Marks, but orders have been issued directly from the Western Controller's office by his forward ship, Muster Mond. All three of you to be taken in immediately. They're here. Yes, they're waiting for you. It's a shame. Especially the savage. After all, he was anthropologically unique. Why are they taking so long? What are they going to do? If I could just explain to someone, this isn't my fault. What are you doing? I'm making some notes on a new jingle about feeling. Feeling what? I don't know. Something, anything, just feeling. Well, that's ridiculous. And it's certainly not going to be any help with the trouble we're in here. I don't care about that. Well, I do. What about me? What rhymes with hurt? Quirk, dirt, a spurt. That's it, spurt. Not the deepest wounds could hurt, though from them life's blood did spurt. You'll tell them for me, won't you, John? Yeah. That this isn't my fault? I'll tell them what you... Look at this, Bernard. It's an antique. They call it a book. No. It's Shakespeare. Looks like a book to me. I can explain everything. It was a mistake. We didn't mean it. I did. I meant to do just what I did, and I'm not sorry. Well, I want your fortune to know that I'm sorry. I'm deeply, deeply sorry for everything that I've done wrong, whatever it is. Yes, yes, Mr. Marks. And what about you, Mr. Savage? Any apologies from you? No. Apparently, you don't like our civilization at all, do you? No. Then you find nothing in our way of life to your liking. Nothing at all. The music. That sometimes is pleasant. Oh, yes. If music be the food of love, enough of that. You've read Shakespeare. Oh, yes. And others. Music hath charms to soothe the savage beast. You see, Mr. Savage, my special conditioning has allowed for all this, even though it's prohibited to everyone else. For those of us who must ultimately guide others to do what is right, it is imperative to understand the lure of what is wrong. And of course, it is a lure, isn't it? Yes. No, no. I hated every moment of it. Well, unfortunately, whatever the motivations, your actions have caused problems, definite problems. But then there's a quite simple way of removing them. What is that? Why, removing both of you, of course. Oh, no. You will have to be removed to some other place so that the possibility of the contamination spreading will be removed with you. You mean you're going to send us away to some free island like Iceland? I don't deserve a fate like that, your fortune. No, no, Mr. Marks, nothing like that. You and Mr. Watson will be allowed to choose among any of the free, free islands to live on. Tahiti, Jamaica, Hawaii. And of course, you will be allowed absolute and complete freedom to do anything you want. Read anything you want. Even think anything you want. That's wonderful. No, it's perfect. That's all I want to be free to write anything I want. And not just jingles, but something more, something different. But not somewhere like Tahiti. No. <laughs> that would be too easy, too pleasant, too much like the life here. Isn't there somewhere else that's harsher, colder, less perfect? Oh, yes. There's a free, free island to meet every dissonant taste. Lapland, Greenland, Antarctica, the Falklands. Of course, we don't have many calls for those. And life on them can be a bit bleak and lonely. Wonderful. That's perfect. That's exactly what I want. Something cold and harsh and bleak. Then I know I'll be able to write something different. I'm ready to go. The sooner the better. Well, fine, fine. You can arrange everything with the Extended Vacation Bureau. Just tell my assistant, Marlena Krupps. Thank you, your fortune. Thank you. John. But we'll talk before I go. May I read your poetry? Yes. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> but 
Jennifer and I coming? Have you gone insane? I can't go somewhere like Lapland or Antarctica. I don't have to go someplace like that, do I, Your Fortship? No, no, of course not, Mr. Marx. I think you'd much prefer somewhere like Tahiti. Tahiti? Yes. A pleasant climate, no work, charmingly pneumatic females. Females? Yes. As many or as few as you desire. But study the brochures, Mr. Marx. I'm sure you'll find the right thing just for you. Thank you. May I have one moment? <clears throat> John, uh, I'm off to Tahiti. And, uh... I just want to say that I wish you all the best. Thank you. I hope you find what you want. Tahiti. Charming nomadic females, you can do anything you want. Read anything you want. Think anything you want. What about me? Yes, what about you, Mr. Savage? You pose a much more difficult problem. Unfortunately, your dissidence is so ingrained, so much a part of you, that it might even be socially dangerous to send you to the free, free islands. And of course, it would be impossible now to send you back to the primitive reservation after your exposure to civilization. And on the other hand, you have made it quite clear that you can't be allowed to openly wander about as part of our society. I don't want to be part of your society. I want to be alone. I think it best to find some isolated place where I can be completely and totally by myself. Yes, that may just be the answer. Thank you. And for your sake, I hope it is. Yes, we'll try it for a while, Mr. Savage. I'll make all the arrangements for you. Savage. I took advantage of my position to let myself in. I hope you don't mind. No. If you'd like to join me, I think I have enough for two. Enough of what, exactly? Well, it's going to be a stew. Potatoes, carrots, onions, fresh fish heads. Uh, no, thank you. I had some imitation scrambled cholesterol before I left. But you go right ahead. Interesting. You've grown your own food. Built furniture, woven cloth for yourself. So now you're Robinson Crusoe, and this is your very own Walden. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I was referring to some other books that you perhaps haven't read. But then I'm sure the same ideas could be found in Shakespeare. Someone cast on an island who builds a dwelling for himself to live in. Be not afraid. The isle is full of noises, sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Ah, yes. The native caravan from you, Mr. Shakespeare's The Tempest. And, uh, is that what you are now, Mr. Savage? Not afraid? At peace with yourself. And if so, why do you have this? To drive evil spirits out of your body, I suppose. I don't believe in evil spirits anymore. I'm not even sure I believe in the good ones. I wish I could, but I can't. So we've taken that away from you, too. I'm sorry. But then if you don't believe in evil spirits anymore, why do you whip yourself? I still believe in my spirit. And the desires within me which are evil. Oh, but my dear Mr. Savage, with a violence passion surrogate treatment, you could achieve the same end, but without any of the unpleasantness and inconvenience. No need for hair shirts and whips. Just the proper button to push and in complete comfort. I don't want comfort. 
Then what do you want? Unpleasantness? Suffering? Pain? Yes, I want all of that. And all of the things you've done away with, I want danger, I want poetry, I want goodness, I want sin, I want freedom. Put more directly, what you are really saying is that you claim the right to be unhappy. All right, then. I claim the right to be unhappy. But that also means the right to be sick, to be crippled, to be insane, the right to grow old and ugly and wrinkled, the right to protect yourself from violence, the right to kill or be killed. The right to have too little to eat. And the right to hope, to love. Yes, even the right to fall in love and then be spurned, betrayed, left wrapped with pain and jealousy. Is all of that really what you want, Mr. Savage? That's exactly what I want. I claim all of it. You're welcome. the angle I want, right through there. Now remember, I want the feely camera following him at all times. Now, DB? No, no, no. Wait till the savage comes outside. I'll tell you when. I'm sorry. Visitors aren't allowed here any longer. Who's in charge here? I am, officer. The name is Darwin Bonaparte, and I happen to be a feely film director. And this is a Darwin Bonaparte feely film conceived, produced, and of course, auteured by Darwin Bonaparte. Who gave you permission to do this? The Western World Controller, his fortune, must have Vermont. Oh, that's different. I'm afraid you're in the way there. If you don't mind, I don't like distraction when I'm creating. There he is! Cameras? Ready when you are, DB! You see how I've caught the artistic essence of the savage your fortune a lone outcast surrounded by the uncivilized forces of nature yes i do see it's quite beautiful alluring in fact but i assume you wouldn't want it to be too uh... too persuasive <laughs> right exactly what i thought too of course this is just a rough cut naturally i plan to get rid of all the alluring parts you'll see once it's edited speeding up slowing down changing words. Uh, the savage will be uh, a charming comic figure. Charming? I thought you meant to say something else. Uh, pathetic. P -p Primitive? Ridiculous. Ridiculous, ridiculous, yes. That's exactly the word I was looking for. Yes, when I finish, the uh, savage will be completely ridiculous. The Sense You Feely Corporation presents a new Feely film by Darwin Bonaparte. A farcical comedy produced, conceived, and autoured by Darwin Bonaparte. Simple Simon Savage. <laughs> on their holiday ration of amphetapep. If the savage doesn't come out soon, it could turn into a riot. We'd better send for Soma gas. We may need it. Yes, yes sir. sir. No, please. Please, no. Please, no.
understand. I know what you meant. I felt it. Thine own love my heart proclaims. Do you understand, John? Bring up the soma again. Whoever you're looking for, sir, we must already have them. I must find her. Perhaps so. She's over at the collection station. No, she's here. She's waiting for me. Breathe. I pretty breathe, Lenina. Then no more shall I. Eyes, look your last. Hearts, take your last embrace. And lips, oh you the doors of breath. Seal with a righteous kiss, a dateless bargain to engrossing death. Termination casualty, Sergeant. No, sir. But there was one case of a complete derangement. A beta. Female. Lenina Disney. And when we revived her, she began talking very strangely. We couldn't make out all the words, except... except for some very vulgar ones. Yes? Love? Marriage? And some even filthier than that. She kept pleading to be left here. Of course, we re-somatized her immediately. See that she's taken to the nearest moral reconditioning center. Obviously a case of acute sexomania. But a few days of synthotherapy and she'll be quite normal and happy again. Yes, yes sir. Mr. Savage? Mr. Savage? Is it finished? Yes, all records of the experiment have been computer shredded and completely electro erased. Of course, he posed great problems. People wondering how he could do without Soma. Why he lived alone. How, why, how, why. But still I wonder. Was there another way, Mawina? For the savage? What? I don't know. Well, you tried to civilize him. To teach him. Yes, like Caliban. The plague take you Prospero for teaching me. Caliban? A different savage, a magician, an ancient kind of controller named Prospero tried to civilize. 
Just a story. I don't understand. No, but John did. Will there be anything more, your fortune? No, nothing more at all. The cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself shall dissolve and like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. <laughs>